Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a brake job on the 2014 Toyota Tundra. I'm gonna do brakes front and back. For this video, I am focusing on the front brakes. I ordered parts from Amazon and they are a power stop. I'll have a link for these parts in the description of the video. And I ordered the rotors and the pads for both the front and the back. I ordered the Extreme since I do pull trailers and pull RVs. In my current situation, I can feel some warpage in my rotors. Wheels chopped. Jack and jack stand in place. So tools that you will need. Uh, impact wrench is nice. Uh, a little wire wheel. Brake bleeder line. You need a torque wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, brake caliper grease, brake cleaner, C-clamp, a little abrasive pad or Scotch-Brite pad. You need a 17 millimeter socket, half inch drive, a short half inch drive extension. You need a 12 millimeter socket, small screwdriver, needle nose pliers, red Loctite, little hammer, extender bar, channel locks, to five gallon, and a little catch pan. And I also used a bucket lid, kind of as a surface to lay items down. With your wheel off, and we are on the front passenger side, get your 12 millimeter socket and take this bolt out. And place the bolt off to the side. Now on the other side of the bolt is your speed sensor wire, and you want to take your needle nose pliers, you don't want to unclip it, and just like that. Now on the back side, we have a tensioner clip right here, as well as a, a pin retainer clip right here. So let's remove this uh, back retainer clip. And for the bottom one, just get your needle nose pliers and unclip it. Now you can take your pins, and in my case, there's not much corrosion where I live, so I can just pull these pins right out. If they don't pull out for you, you can uh, use a pair of needle nose pliers, maybe a small punch to tap them out. Take these pins and put them off to the side. Now take this lower clip and put it off to the side. So we're going to remove this complete caliper right now. We loosened all this up because you can see that this is a hard line right here and this is really fragile and we don't want to put any tension on it. So that's why I have my bucket set up there. It's going to be my little platform to rest the uh, caliper on. All right, so the caliper is held in by these two bolts. This one, this one down here. Uh, they take a 17 millimeter socket. I'm gonna use my little impact gun. For the top one, I need a little three inch extension because of this brake line's positioning. The bottom one does not need an extension. All right, so with those loose, Get your hand in place. You don't want this to fall. Put the bolt off to the side. Make sure you're holding the caliper with a hand, a free hand. And so now we are going to just pull it on out. At this time, you can uh, you can take these uh, original uh, brake pads and just toss them off to the side because we don't need them right now. And I'm just going to place it on my bucket so that I don't put any tension on this uh, brake line here and it'll hold it. So I'm gonna remove the rotor now. Since I'm replacing the rotor, you don't have to be too gentle. A little uh, mini sledge, give her a nice tap. And pull it off and place it off to the side. And at this time we're gonna take our little wire wheel and we're gonna clean the hub surface here. Put a little catch pan underneath here and let it spray it down some brake, brake cleaner. Now we're going to take the time to compress our caliper. First thing you want to do is take this little boot off here of your 
with your 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, go ahead and uh, break the bleeder, crack it loose. All right. All right, so with your uh, brake bleeder catch container secured, somewhere off to the side, take your bleeder hose and connect it to the bleeder. Now we're gonna take one of the old brake pads, just kind of slide it into place, right about like that. Get your C-clamp, make sure you hold on to caliper and a C clamp. Slowly compress the pistons on the outside. All right, so we will temporarily remove the C clamp. And now we're gonna get the other brake pad, the other old brake pad, and we're gonna place it in position on the opposite side. And I'm gonna put the C clamp back into place on the back side here. And I'm going to take my channel locks. I'm going to use them to squeeze the front side. And now I'm going to compress the piston. Let's see if we can't see this a little better. I'm going to compress, just squeeze it slightly. It doesn't take much pressure. And just squeeze it until those pistons are compressed. That's that. Now remove your C clamp. Remove the old pads. Close the bleeder valve. My, my, I put my catch pan underneath my caliper and I'm just going to take a scotch bright or soft uh, rubbing pad and I'm going to clean these surfaces where the brake pads move in and out. Make sure that there's no gum or crud in there. These are actually pretty clean. We're gonna take our brake cleaner, clean the caliper. Good. Let that dry off. Now I'm going to remove my catch pan. At this time, we are going to reinstall this caliper, but before we do so, I'm going to take my red Loctite and I'm gonna prepare the bolts that mount the caliper. Doesn't take much. All right. So right before we put our caliper on, now we're gonna put our new rotor on. So make sure you've got the correct rotor for the correct side you're working on, and we are working on the front passenger side the vehicle and that's what this one is labeled as. We're going to clean the oil off the surface and so this is the inside. This will be facing the inside and we will get some brake cleaner and wipe it down with a clean paper towel. Place it into position. Hold it into place with one of your lug nuts. So right before we install this caliper, we're going to take this brake caliper grease and we are going to put a layer of grease on these flat surfaces where the brakes will slide in and out. All four surfaces. I've lubricated all those flat surfaces. All right, top one started. I know the visual's not very good here, but doing my best. All right, bottom so one started. Of course, before you put your caliper on, and I failed to do so, we need to clean the front side of the brake as well. So we'll do that right now. Let's ready. 
Uh, you know, hand tighten these caliper bolts down as as much as we can. Now's a good time to put this hose bracket back into position. That hose bracket, this one, sorry. That way we don't forget. All right. And at the same time, go ahead and, and clip your speed sensor wire back into position. And okay, now let's go ahead and torque down these bolts. Okay, so we have our torque wrench and we have it dialed into 73 foot pounds. And we will go ahead and tighten this top one. I need the extension because of this brake line here. I'll remove the extension for the bottom one. Be careful of this brake line because your breaker bars and your torque wrench will actually make contact with it if you're not careful. All right, so now it's time to put our new brake pads in. There's, there's two pads here. One of them has a, a wear indicator. That'll be on the inside. And then the other one does not. The one with the, the wear indicator, um, this one right here, we'll make sure that it gets positioned on the inside towards the bottom. So we're gonna get our brake caliper grease again. Lubricate the sliding surfaces on the brake pad. Need, I should not need to say this, you don't want any grease on the friction surface. All right. Finally, that, that nice shiny shim surface, that's where the caliper will piston will, will rest against. You want to put a nice little grease layer on that as well. Now go ahead and slide it into place goes in one way. Slide it right in just like that. Do the same for the other pad. So now remember those pins that we took off in the first place? We're going to clean those off with our little wire wheel. All right, so once you get those cleaned off, go ahead and uh, lubricate those down with the same uh, brake caliper grease. So you'll want to be aware where the hole is, because you'll want the hole in a position to where your retaining pin can hold it. And so now we're gonna do the top one. And we're just going to, hopefully you can see this. Yeah, you can see this. We're just going to fish the top one in position. For the bottom one, your new clips are in place for the bottom one. Let's prepare that one real quick. Secure the clip into place with my needle nose pliers. This stays on the outside here, otherwise it'll fall right out. There we go, just like that. You want these on the outside, clipped in the holes, cupped around your pin, holding tension on your brake pads. So now, with the pins in place, get our new uh, retaining pin. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. She's in the pin up here, in the pin down here, and latched into place right there. All right, uh, depress your brake paddle. 
to extend the piston of the caliper so it's nice and tight. All right. Now I'm going to pull a rubber boot back on. Tools picked up, wheel back on. I'm just go ahead and form this little break-in procedure. That's some, some nice instructions on the break-in. So we'll do that. Um, I did the brakes all the way around on this truck. If you're in the same situation, go ahead and top off your master cylinder with dot three brake fluid. To the max. So I have new brake pads all the way around. The calipers are compressed as far in as they can possibly be. Therefore, I'm filling it up to the max line. Okay, so that completes my brake job today. I performed front and back brakes. However, this video is focused on the front brakes, brake part kit, and then the consumables. We're paying a little over $350 on the rear brakes. We're paying actually $250. And if you're doing front and back, consumables adjusted to just under $650 in parts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that like button. If you like watching my other videos, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.